The Expo 2020 Dubai is nearing its conclusion. Countries across the globe are hoping to bank on the opportunities provided by the grand event. Amongst them is Jamaica, which celebrated their National Day recently to lure more investors to their country and to discuss the potential offered by the country. We speak to their foreign minister as well as the minister for trade. Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, let's start talking about connections between the UAE and Jamaica. You've recently had some meetings with the uh, the aviation sector yes. as well as our, our Minister of Foreign Affairs and International yes. Cooperation. Um, talk to us about the connectivity between the two countries and uh, your role in enhancing them a bit further through the Expo. Our presence here, I think, is uh, not only reflective of uh, how it is that Jamaica can uh, bring itself to the world and to Dubai, but how we are able to bring Dubai into the world, into Jamaica. In our uh, pavilion, we not only share a bit about our history and our culture, our music and dance and the touristic side of Jamaica, but we're also fostering discussion about the business side, which is less known. Mm -hmm. uh, this has included the connectivity to which you're referred. So we have had a positive discussion with the Emirates Group about in increasing connectivity between the two regions. And uh, we look forward to uh, pursuing those more intensively in the future. Uh, but we're also looking at logistics. We're looking at at light manufacturing, we're looking at uh, special economic zone participation, mm -hmm. and uh, these are all areas which we think can benefit both countries. You've been the Foreign Minister uh, or Minister for Foreign Affairs and Trade since 2016, yeah. and uh, we've seen the pandemic. It, was, it yeah. wasn't the most pleasant of all experiences for <laughs> different parts of the globe, but particularly for countries that are still hoping and banking on the FDI inflows. We saw that in 2020 we hit the lowest in, 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 a, in a decade for yeah. FDI inflows. Uh, so how has the post-pandemic recovery been so far, uh, looking at over the last two years? Well, firstly, I love to hear you discussing it as post-pandemic, because yeah. I think we're still in the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> but Jamaica is uh, happily, uh, if I can say so, pursuing what we're calling the hockey stick recovery. We are um, we're recovering faster mm. uh, than many other countries, and we have learn to pivot in many ways in tourism for example when we had to lock down and you know that of course is really just absolutely horrific for a tourism dependent country we use the time to train staff in covid protocols sanitization protocols and defined what we call a tourism resilient corridor which was a specific geographic area where attractions markets and hotels could be open but we specially train staff so we reopened started reopening in june 2020 although much of the world was still uh, locked down and we maintained notwithstanding a 0.1 percent infection rate within that corridor of which we're very proud as so of business process outsourcing uh, we changed our regulations and said well if we have curfews and lockdowns and the people cannot go to work because they can't social distance we changed the regulations and allowed for them to work remotely which is not usually permissible in a free zone. What that meant was that during the pandemic, our, our business process outsourcing actually grew. So we are above our employment in BPO, uh, post-pandemic versus pre. So that's a demonstration of the other side of Jamaica that people don't know so much, and that is another reason why we're here. And what's so um, interesting about Jamaica for international investors, yes. you know, because everyone has associated the country for its wonderful food, music, yeah. Yeah. Uh, be it sports as well. Uh, but now uh, you, you're talking about investment, especially in free zones, which yeah. has faced a little bit of a structural change as well yeah. since you took over uh, the Ministry of Trade as well. Yeah, we actually, we've moved from the free zone concept to the special economic zone concept which is a little broader mm. but we are working very closely with the world free zone organization based right here in Dubai and really are honored to have been selected to host the eighth AICE this uh, will be hosting that in Montego Bay June 13 to 17 this year so that conference is going to bring together policymakers private sector free zone organizations free zone operators and it's going to look at how we as a world leverage free zone zones and special economic zones for recovery. The world is in recovery mode and as we have had 
you know, many business-to-business -business exchanges while here in Dubai, we're all of the mindset that you, there's not a moment to lose. We've lost two years of economic activity, so we have to find those opportunities now. And that conference in June is going to be one of the places at which the world comes together to determine how we bounce back. And how are you expecting that conference to sort of play a role in, in, in pushing the economic aspect. We're going to have workshops, training workshops mm -hmm. uh, about the new economy, the new normal, how, we've, how we're able to pivot, uh, how we're able to leverage uh, customs arrangements uh, in this new environment to ensure that we avoid the supply chain challenges that we've all suffered through during the pandemic, how we manage them better, how we're better able to predict and leverage and pivot. Uh, so it's going to be bringing, as I said before, policymakers, academics, and the private sector, most importantly. Government doesn't trade. I always remind people it's the private sector that trades. We, it's our job to facilitate. So it will be an opportunity to listen. It will be an opportunity to exchange views and it will be an opportunity to make changes. Well, we're looking forward to that. But yeah. now your visit to the UAE, yeah. um, uh, how, what, what impact do you hope to achieve or, or make or create when, after your visit here? The expo itself is not only a symbol of hope for the world. I think this expo is a demonstration of the fact that we can continue to do business. Mm -hmm. We can change our safety protocols and we can be together safely to do business, to exchange cultures, pra cultural practices, and to build relationships. And uh, I think that is allowing for a platform for countries like Jamaica to springboard in this new quote unquote post-pandemic era. So we've been able to come to the table to say, be with us in our pavilion, share a little bit of what makes us so special. And while you're there, learn about our opportunities in film and the creative industries, our opportunities in boutique tourism sectors. Uh, come and learn about how our special economic zones. Come and learn about how well connected we are. Did you know that we have the seventh largest natural harbor in the world? Mm -hmm. Did you know we have 400 flights a week from 40 airlines? We're connected to 220 gateways in the USA alone. We are the aviation hub between North and South America and have shipping connectivity to all international lines. Logistically, we are the place to be. We're building out warehouse capacity. We have free trade arrangements with the US and with the uh, South American countries such as, Costa, uh, such as Colombia and Central and Costa Rica. There's so much business to be done. So you can come and look beyond the beach and do business in Jamaica. That's the message we're bringing at Expo. And lastly, when can we see the world getting back to normality? Where, <laughs> uh, where how much can we keep our fingers crossed? So to get your thoughts on the importance of the world now moving forward and, mm -hmm. and when can we get back uh, 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 to, 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 to normality? While we've all spent the last two years learning a lot, if the pandemic has taught us one thing, it is that there's a level of unpredictability mm -hmm. that one has to simply learn how to manage. So for us in Jamaica, the issue has been about balance. How do we manage to recognize our reality? If we have a large informal economy, you can't lock down because people need to earn daily, they need to get vaccinated. Beyond vaccination, we have to just follow the safety protocols, listen to uh, authoritative sources of information like yourself, and, uh, and slowly we will get back to what will undoubtedly be the new normal. Well, we're looking forward to that new normal <laughs> and we wish you all the very best uh, for your forum that's taking place as well yeah. later on this year and uh, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me and thank you for your interest in our country.